Mmm. Bananas are awesome. Maybe you like the taste and maybe you don't, but they are quite nutritious at the same time. But you might think that how such a yummy food be radioactive? And it contains anti-matter? Ha, huh, no way. But that's true. It already happened. Yeah, it did. But now it's time for you to know that. Why bananas are radioactive? Radioactive isn't such a bad word. Really, lots of stuff is radioactive like spinach, white beans, apricots, salmon, avocados, and mushrooms, and yogurt. In fact, your body also produces some radioactive elements. Everything in the world is composed of elements which in turn are made up of atoms. Some of these atoms are unstable and decay or break apart. When this happens, they emit what we call radiation that can take form of subatomic particles such as electrons, alpha particles and neutrons or electromagnetic waves known as gamma rays. All of these carry energy and are capable of breaking down or ionizing molecules they encounter. Bananas are radioactive because of potassium. Well, you will certainly die from radiation poisoning if you are able to eat 10 million bananas at once. You will also witness chronic symptoms if you eat 274 bananas a day for 7 years. Well, that is quite an amount we can't eat. Banana has potassium atoms of 3 kinds. Potassium 39, Potassium 40 and Potassium 41. 39 and 41 are not radioactive, but Potassium 40 are the one causing radioactivity. 100 grams of banana have 0.328 grams of potassium, of which potassium 40 is 0.0000396 grams. Seems very small? It is, but wait. Now the 0.0000296 grams of potassium 40 that you did get has a half-life of 1.25 billion years compared to the 5715 years half-life of the carbon-14 atom inside you. So as a matter of fact, you are more radioactive as compared to a single banana, so you don't need to worry. For an average banana, it will produce one positron every 75 minutes. A positron is the opposite of an electron, which makes it an antimatter. Where electron is a matter, when matter and antimatter meet, they annihilate each other, releasing energy. So what can we do with antimatter? Well, we can create an antimatter bomb. An antimatter bomb is 10 times more powerful than our most nuclear weapons. It is due to the fact that nuclear reactions only release 10% of their energy created as the blast itself, where antimatter being antimatter gives all 100% as the explosion. One pound of antimatter is equivalent to around 90 megatons of TNT. So in theory, you could make a pocket-sized bomb that could devastate a whole city. We can't get that amount of antimatter because it is not easily available. But we can do something. Like I said, a banana releases one positron in 75 minutes. If this positron contacts with water, it will annihilate causing the water to warm up. The bananas make positrons that annihilate with electrons in the water. This would heat up the water and make steam. The steam would be then fed into a normal stream turbine generator like in a gas or nuclear power plant. But wait, we can't just use one banana. We will need 22 into 10 raised to power 20 bananas, which is equal to 2200 quintillion bananas to produce only 2000 watts of power. Well, I think this idea is not worth the deal. I'll say just keep buying bananas and add them in your oatmeal. Have you ever wondered about the oxygen we breathe? The oxygen which is a blessing for us, which led our survival. Well, this oxygen can become nightmare if its composition increases by 10% in air. It would create some serious consequences. But go on and check out that story of why.